Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon, High Excellencies, our mothers, the chairman of the occasion, our hostess, my sister from another mother, Ajia Aisha Babangida, and my sisters, Alangi is there, and so many of them. I never met quintessential Miriam. I only met her on the television by watching television of her programs of Better Life. I think I was between the ages of maybe 14 and 18. But anything that had to do with Better Life for rural women and any news that came on, I must leave whatever I was doing and I'll keep my eyes on my parents' black and white television. I never missed any of her news. And I didn't know that fate would take me to any government house. When I found myself in government house, I had no mother. My mother was, had gone. My mother-in-law had gone. And there was nobody to direct me. I was like a fish thrown out of a water. And I was looking for direction. I didn't see anybody to direct me. Then I remembered all the things I watched as a teenager in Better Life. And that was what propelled me to do what I did in Akwaibo. I met uh, Dr. Mrs. Mariam Babangida in 1985, during our Naoa days. She came across warm, focused, and inspiring. We developed a big sister, little sister relationship. When she became first lady, and my husband was, in, was posted to Ogun State, our relationship blossomed. When she started motor the idea of better life for rural women, as it was then, I was sold on the idea. As the brief of the project became apparent, it awaked a national spirit. It was the first time since Nigeria independence that there was a mass mobilization movement of women for women by women women's own civil rights movement. She was the embodiment of the movement, a strong, educated, and empowered black African woman. She was an inspiration to us all. She taught us through actions and deeds. That is why today we haven't had a national woman leader like her. You see, this morning while I was coming, as I was preparing this paper, my daughter said, don't forget her fashion. You know she's very fashionable. We were struggling to tie this hair tie. <laughs> this hair gear, as we were trying to tie it this morning, I said, you, are, you will make me to go late. She said, no, no. This is how she started. Don't you know they have a, a hair you know, style for Mariam Babangida, I want you to tie it. And this is what she was able to do. I don't know whether it looks like it. I always loved how Madame behaved, both in the public, in the home, anywhere you saw her, she was determined, comfortable. And I, I wanted to be like her, and I think I'm trying. <laughs> when she became first lady, she decided that uh, she must wear African things, Ankara, Adire, Ashoki. So she said to me, you know, when, when she wanted, uh, you know, there's this famous black and white, the one you were referring to, it was woven, to, uh, woven by Alaji Isiaka. Uh, Aro, I told you the name, I forgot it. Uh, Aro, no, something like that in uh, Ilori. And the thing she made that man to do is amazing. Because he's just a local Ashoke. He's not even sophisticated at all. And she told me that that's the man, you know, because he weaves for my mom, just simple things. She said, okay, and then she will make him to make so many, so many, you know, she, she will give me an idea. I'll give it to him. He was going back and forth in Lagos, in Lagos. There was this particular time, 
it was, I think it was Nigerian Independence Day. And I remember the president on that occasion, President Babangida, he mesmerized the nation by wearing all Navy, I think, or Air Force, all white that day. So she had ordered this ashoke to be woven by this man. And the ashoke had, she said it must have the army, the Navy, and the um, Air Force uh, emblems or whatever it's called. So it took him a long while, back and forth, back and forth. Finally, he got it. I sent it to her and she said, yes, let's see whether they will realize, whether they will notice. Only for the late uh, Alaji Kere Ahmed, say, I can see the first lady, I can see the army, whatever, I can see the navy, I can. <laughs> so after that, I said, Auntie, mm -hmm, they got you. So we laughed it off. So um, what else? She's just amazing. Thank you so much. Simply amazing. I thank God for his, her life. She is a quintessential personality in Nigeria because she built on the foundation of others and expanded it and made sure that it is a thing that the foundation is very strong and cannot be thrown away by storm. Not only in Nigeria, but he moved out of Nigeria to other parts of Africa. Yes, we thank God for her life and we thank God that he took some knowledge you know, from those who were before her from Mama Agui Ronsi, Azikiwe, and so on and so forth, Tafawa Baliwa, and he took something from them and he molded it together and he added value. And that is why we are speaking about her today. And we pray that people too, that are in this kind of position, will add value to whatever another person has done to make us to make progress. Little is much. When a little is added to a little and is blessed by God, it becomes bigger than what it is. I thank all the other first ladies that came after her because they did not throw it away. They had their own project, and that has made Nigeria a better place today. We will not be there forever. People will come after us, but we must continually do the right thing that we make people build on the foundation that we have built. Thank you very much. I was a pioneer staff of Lagos State University in 1984, and I became head of the department just during the regime of IBB. And as an academic, I want to do this in staccato fashion so that I don't waste our time. I want to look at the signposts of the things we used to talk about. It was novel to us that a woman first lady would bring forth the concept of first lady to such an elegant height. We were mesmerized. And fellow colleagues, female academics, we used to have a weekly meeting. And one of the first three things we would discuss, what did Madame wear last week? But for us, she was and an intellectual in her own right. It was not just clothes and clothes and clothes. We saw value in her intellect and she was an unofficial think tank for the IBB regime. <laughs> Number two, all day we have been saying that women have not been allowed to come out and do something. We have not given kudos to IBB himself for allowing his wife to come out in the open. I think he deserves it. Number three, she did a needs assessment of what was needed in the rural areas before she came out. There was a meeting. Uh, then there were three or four local government areas and she had a meeting uh, the f which culminated in the first FCT organized conference on the Better Life Program. And this shows an intellectual part and organizational, exceptionally done by her. Because you don't just go into something, you do a needs assessment 
of health, um, agricultural inputs, what the women really need, what uh, would be the effect. Because as a conflict res resolution expert, you have to be careful that what you are trying to solve does not cause more problems. So she did that. And the Better Life was a program that nobody could take away from the Nigerian woman. So I don't want to go on and on. This her reign as first lady was a watershed in the life of our country, Nigeria. There was peace in the home. And we expect that other first ladies will take a cue. And I want to make a suggestion that there is no blueprint for first ladies. This will be the forum that should give, when it becomes an annual event, the blueprint for the first lady of Nigeria and indeed Africa. Something you can build on, make better and own, suit it to your own passion. But we will produce a, a blueprint. It's a challenge for Aisha and the team. Thank you very much. There was one occasion we had in um, Mrs. Uh, Sambu's, Mrs. Sambu's husband had just passed and we came to the house to visit her. Mrs. Sambo is the sister of Ms., um, um, Dr. Mrs. Marian Babangida. And we were sitting and eating. And suddenly I started choking. And people were saying, see what, go and bring a glass. Bring a glass so that they can give me water. She just stood up from where she was, got a glass, any glass she saw, poured water and gave to me. And she said, the somebody won't die when they look for glass. This one will they here and call. Not be one of them, I use them. That's the kind of person she is. She has empathy and she's very kind. In conclusion, I will say that she lived a remarkable life and left behind indelible footprints on the hand of her time. Thank you very much for listening to me. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Again, the quintessential Miriam. Thank you very much. We're coming home now to Auntie Jume. Being with her almost all my life taught me lots of lessons of life. She was very, very kind, a rare breed, an eloquent woman, a woman of substance who stood by her words and taught us how to be of integrity. I'm sure the children will attest to this, especially Aminu. Aminu is here. Um, when we have, when she has guests, she will tell us to sit on the floor. And when the conversation gets deeper, she will tell us to move out. It's not for children. And I see that up till today in Aminu, her third child, whenever he comes to visit me, despite the fact he has a big position as a chairman of a bank, Aminu still sits on the floor and we converse together. That humility, that simplicity, that well-being, I think gives us that respect from other people. Then my dear daughter, Aisha, who of course, yes, I looked after her, we're all over, all over. Then she's dear to me, also with Mohammed and Halima. Um, Halima used to call me Auntie Mimi. Remember those days, we move around when she was small to Mrs. Bali's school. And she says, this is my school. Turn left, turn right. I'll never forget the upbringing. It was simple, humane, humble, sincere. And today we can see that the children are standing tall. Thank you for supporting your mom's legacy. Thank you for withering the storm. I know it wasn't easy and it's still not easy. God never promised us ease in this world. He said it will just be easier for us in the hereafter. So remain courageous, hardworking, strong, resilient, 
and brave and you'll overcome. So I want to talk about Soka Kahuta. Soka Kahuta is a little village in Niger State. Though I was not really with her when this happened, but she, she told me about it. She got to this village um, to propagate Islam. And when she got there, she'd been going there severally. The last time she visited the place, she told them she is tired. Are they not tired? And they just looked at her, unknown to them that that would be the last. It was like a premonition. But she did all her best, at least religious-wise. She made sure she was able to play her role. And also, as a social crusader, she did the very best to change a lot of people. These same people, upon her death, I wouldn't forget, came in about, I think, four or five buses. They were wailing. And we're asking, who are these people? Little did we know. They are the villagers from Sauka Kahuta. What a coincidence. Then she went further ahead to propagate Islam, climbed Okada, and also as a, as a social crusader for the Better Life program, she went further to help them develop, integrate them into the system, taught them how to live their lives, and actually you know, um, integrated well with them, despite the fact that they're villagers. I saw some pictures of her sitting down on the floor, on the mat, eating their type of food. And when I asked her, what kind of food are you eating? Are you sure it's clean? She said to me, Tuantuka. And it's a typical Gwari food. I was surprised. That humane nature of her had actually brought out the best in her. Even though sometimes she's misinterpreted because she's a disciplinarian. But that notwithstanding, she made her way. And I'm glad today her name sings lots of good notes um, it makes us feel very happy as a family and i'm proud of each and every one of you who are all associated with her because she had good intentions for each and every one of us i really don't know where to start well let me start by saying that uh, it's really a singular pleasure to be able to see firsthand all the first ladies of this nation. If I use abbreviations, please pardon me. I don't know whether it is MIB that deserves IBB or IBB that deserves MIB, but they are what we would say an excellent pair. When MIB is conducting her meetings, you will think a general is in charge. And when IBB is conducting meetings, I think it is MIB doing her thing. I have only one thing to say, that Nigeria is made for greatness, absolute greatness. We may run round and round, but the foundations have been set, examples have been set. Each of the first ladies here had added something and others are adding onto it. If we can get the 70% of the population in the rural areas and mainstream them into the development activities of this country, we would be going somewhere. It is here, one is hearing about all those people who had contributed. Who would have known? Huh that uh, people have been consulted, 
that, uh, well, let me not just go into all of that. But my promise is that it is time this nation relaunched DeFree. Not necessarily in that name, but one is working on it. In the next couple of months, we will be ready. But I mention that because that would be a strong pillar on which we could get the better life for rural women going again. And Aisha, this is what I promise you. It will be done. Memories kept on flooding as people kept on talking. At times I had to bring out my handkerchief. That's how bad it was. But we thank God for her. We thank God for your dad. We thank God for what they have done. We thank God for you for being courageous to say, I will take this on and ride on it and make sure that her memory lives. Her memory would live. Thank you so much. I want to thank Auntie Aisha. I want to thank you so very much for bringing up this great memory event. I want to thank you so very much for bringing everybody together. I want to thank you for letting me part of this great event. So letting people know that mom really impacted so very much in me. Thank you so very much. Thank you very much. Indeed, mom impacted on all of us. Now you're moving to um, your xylophone where Udo Miriam will entertain us with Sweet Mother, dedicated to Madame, to all the mothers in the hall. And we say a big thank you to you all for celebrating a great woman. Indeed, the quintessential Miriam. So Udo. distinguished mothers and the gentlemen here and good afternoon to the mothers of the nation beautiful as you are let me start by thanking all the mothers of the nation present for so graciously agreeing to be here and to support the mothers of the nation initiative One house, please. Thank you so much. We understand that everybody's excited concerning this, but we need to give honor to Aisha. She has done so much, and I believe it's best we listen to what she has to say. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you. So I hope this will be the first of many events to celebrate the achievements of our dear mothers. So I'd like to thank all of you for being here today especially those of you who traveled long distance. And I'd particularly like to thank distinguished Senator Daisy Danjuma, who so graciously agreed to be our chair today. She is not only an outstanding public servant, but was also a very, very close friend of my late mother's and remains a much loved family friend. We are all here to pay tribute to our mothers of outstanding courage, wisdom, and integrity. Ladies who have served their country selflessly and often without due recognition. And those commitment 
to the betterment of our country remains unwavering. I'm sure I'm not the only person here who is in awe of these amazing ladies and truly inspired by their examples. They have lived through some of the pivotal moments in our country's history. They were there when historic decisions were made, when their husbands had to deal with major crises, and took the fate of our nation into their hands. And yet their role as First Lady was to maintain their composure, to observe proper decorum at all times, and to represent Nigerian womanhood at its best. History is often seen as something that is made by great men. And it is said that behind every great man stands a great woman. But throughout the modern history of Nigeria, our first ladies have not stood passively behind their husbands. They have been a source of unstinting moral support, of quiet political and intellectual counsel, and of course, of emotional comfort and solace and not only for their husbands. Ever since our country gained independence in 1960, our first ladies have been public figures committed to the common good of all Nigerians. So it has been a privilege to hear from ladies who played such a vital role at the beginning of Nigeria's journey as an independent nation helping to manage the many challenges of bringing together such a vast, diverse country. Their Excellencies, Mrs. Uche Azikiwe, Mrs. Victoria Iransin, and Mrs. Victoria Gawan, and Mrs. Ajoke Mohammed, who had to leave. We're married to some of independence, independent Nigeria's earliest presidents and represent the generation that helped shape our nation as a self-governing entity. On that note, I would also like to thank those family members of the late Alhaji Tupawa Balewa and of Alhaji Shehu Shagari, as well as my own family, for being here today. In the beginning, some detractors said independence will never work that Nigerians were not capable of self-government, or that the nation would inevitably be divided between North, South, Muslims, and Christians. Too many different ethnicities, languages, and perspectives. And of course, we faced more than our share of difficulties. Flattering democracy, civil war, social and economic upheaval. But through it all, Nigeria has endured. So it has been equally fascinating to hear from those who who have served as first lady in more recent decades. Their Excellencies, Mrs. Maria Mabacha, Mrs. Margaret Shoneko, Mrs. Fatia Bukar, Mrs. Very strange calling them Miss, but please forgive me. So Mrs. Ture Aradua, and Mrs. Patience Jonathan. All the First Ladies present today serve their country with distinction as it has. Of course, in any democracy, people will have different views about the merits of particular heads of state. I'm sure we all have our own preferences and biases, but the Nigerian people have never given up hope that we can be a successful that we can have a flourishing civil society, booming economy. Nigerian men and women have worked hard in their own lives, the life of the nation. And very often the spirit of the nation has been best kept not only by the man who yields power at any given time, but by the lady side. First lady is close to power. But crucially, take a step back from politics. She is a witness to close quarters to the decisive moment that shaped the nation's destiny. But she has no direct say in the decisions that are made. 
Instead, she must rise above day-to-day -day politics next on a more emotional level. And to represent the more enduring values of the nation that lie behind politics. And the partisan conflict with which her husband must contend. We are very lucky to have had many first ladies prove themselves able to do just that. But I hope the mothers forgive me if I take a moment to focus on one first lady in particular. A lady who I believe embodied the best qualities shared with all our esteemed first ladies. And of course, I'm thinking of my late mother, Dr. Mariam Babangida. We recently marked the 10th anniversary of my mother's death that came nearly two decades after my father's time in office. But my mother was still fondly remembered by all who had known her and by countless Nigerians, home and abroad. Of course, my mother was famous for being very glamorous, but she was also much more than that. Truly woman of the She became a role model for many Nigerian women with an enduring appeal that lasted. She was a passionate champion of issues and especially women's rural development. My mother founded the Better Life Program for the African Rural Women in 1906 and the Mariam Babangida National Center for Development in 19. She also reached out to first ladies of other African nations in order to forge connections and to share ideas about how first ladies can improve the lives Many of the first ladies who came after my mother continued her and built on legacies, just as she built legacies of those who came. But in my own humble way, I have also been privileged to be able to continue my mother, especially through the Better Life program, which just goes to show that our first ladies can make us Find others to follow their lead. My mother certainly inspired me. She is the reason I stand today. I was in awe of her education and all she was able to teach me. A mastery of protocol, a knowledge of statecraft, and perhaps especially her personal discipline and basic person. So I want you all to be as inspired by my mother's example as well. Let us appreciate and acknowledge her memory and remember her example, not only in all we do, but also how we do. So whether you are a politician or a businesswoman, wife, a mother, Dr. Mariam Masiba Bengida, remains a role model of faith. We can also take inspiration from my incredible first date, mothers of nation who have graced our nation. So once again, I am enormously grateful to our dear First Ladies who are here and who have agreed to support the Mothers of the Nation initiative. In the years to come, they will, they will be helping to unlock the potential Nigeria's women by championing worthy causes, from the education of the girl child to the empowerment of widows. Today is the beginning of an initiative that will involve numerous sectors and cultural program in order to build on the legacy of my mother Nigeria, and Nigeria's other remarkable. So I want to make today the inaugural annual celebration. Next year, 
and the year after, and the year after that, we will gather again, share ideas, celebrate successes, and to plan further events and initiatives. So I am eternally grateful to you all for being part of it. And I hope you will all have taken time out of this session. I hope you have all taken something out of the session today, whether that lessons about the potential of development, inspiration about the future of or reassurance about the basic our nation. But that note, let me end with and I'd like all my mothers to ask each and every one of them, please and my chairman should stay seated too. <laughs> I want to say, I want to do a little prayer first before I tell you what I want to do. First of all, I would like to pray to God for our beautiful mothers. May God continue to protect you. May He give you health. May He give you patience, tolerate, and may He just put warmth. Love, heart, good, us, because you are self. As you came here today, take now. To our wonderful first ladies, thank you very much. Thank you.